A Course in Miracles, Workbook for Students, Lesson 183. I call upon God's name and on my own. God's name is holy, but no holier than yours. To call upon his name is but to call upon your own. A father gives his son his name, and thus identifies the son with him. His brothers share his name, and thus are they united in a bond to which they turn for their identity. Your father's name reminds you who you are, even within a world that does not know, even though you have not remembered it. God's name cannot be heard without response, nor said without an echo in the mind which calls you to remember. Say his name, and you invite the angels to surround the ground on which you stand and sing to you as they spread out their wings to keep you safe and shelter you from every worldly thought that would intrude upon your holiness. Repeat God's name, and all the world responds by laying down illusions. Every dream the world holds dear has suddenly gone by, and where it seemed to stand you find a star, a miracle of grace. The sick arise, healed of their sickly thoughts. The blind can see, the deaf can hear, the sorrowful cast off their mourning, and the tears of pain are dried as happy laughter comes to bless the world. Repeat the name of God, and little names have lost their meaning. No temptation but becomes a nameless and unwanted thing before God's name. Repeat his name, and see how easily you will forget the names of all the gods you value. They have lost the name of God you gave them. They become anonymous and valueless to you. Although before you let the name of God replace their little names, you stood before them worshipfully, naming them as gods. Repeat the name of God and call upon yourself, whose name is His. Repeat His name, and all the tiny, nameless things on earth slip into right perspective. Those who call upon the name of God cannot mistake the nameless for the name, nor sin for grace, nor bodies for the Holy Son of God. And should you join a brother as you sit with him in silence and repeat God's name along with him, within your quiet minds, you have established there an altar which reaches to God himself and to his Son. Practice but this today. Repeat God's name slowly again and still again. Become oblivious to every name but his. Hear nothing else. Let all your thoughts become anchored on this. No other words we use except at the beginning, when we say today's idea but once. And then God's name becomes our only thought, our only word, the only thing that occupies our minds, the only wish we have, the only sound with any meaning, and the only name of everything that we desire to see, of everything that we would call our own. Thus do we give an invitation which can never be refused, and God will come and answer it himself. Think not he hears the little prayers of those who call on him with names of idols cherished by the world. They cannot reach him thus. He cannot hear requests that he be not himself, or that his son receive another name than his. Repeat his name, and you acknowledge him as sole creator of reality. And you acknowledge also that his son is part of him, creating in his name. Sit silently and let his name become the all-encompassing idea which holds your mind completely. Let all thoughts be still except this one. And to all other thoughts respond with this. And see God's name replace the thousand little names you gave your thoughts, not realizing that there is one name for all there is and all that there will be. Today you can achieve a state in which you will experience the gifts of grace. You can escape all bondage of the world and give the world the same release you found. You can remember what the world forgot and offer it your own remembering. You can accept today the part you play in its salvation and your own as well, and both can be accomplished perfectly. Turn to the name of God for your release, and it is given you. No prayer but this is necessary for it holds them all within it. Words are insignificant, and all requests unneeded 
when God's son calls on his father's name. His father's thoughts become his own. He makes his claim to all his father gave, is giving still, and will forever give. He calls on him to let all things he thought he made be nameless now, and in their place the holy name of God becomes his judgment of their worthlessness. All little things are silent. Little sounds are soundless now. The little things of earth have disappeared. The universe consists of nothing but the Son of God who calls upon his Father, and his Father's voice gives answer in his Father's holy name. In this eternal, still relationship, in which communication far transcends all words and yet exceeds in depth and height whatever words could possibly convey, is peace eternal. In our Father's name, we would experience this peace today, and in his name, it shall be given us.